This is a Latitude 120L and has a single core Pentium M CPU first released in 2005 and is running Windows 10. Today we'll see what it is like to run Windows 10 on hardware this old. Could you go even older? And also a little bit about this Latitude because it's interesting but not for the right reasons. And the 120L was one of the cheapest business machines Dell sold around 2006-2007 and if this looks to you like an Inspiron 1300, well you are right, because they just slapped on the Latitude logo and hey presto, we have a cheap business machine. And even for those years, this wasn't a stellar machine. Even Dell themselves admitted that its low cost was its main uh, selling point, stating that the Latitude 120L is a great solution for customers focused primarily on initial costs, but want a reliable enterprise grade notebook. Cost cutting is really the overarching theme when looking at the design of this machine. We have an oasis of cheap, scratchy plastics. While durable, it's really not very nice. And you also might have noticed these enormous screen bezels. And that's where it gets especially hilarious, because this is a 15.4 inch chassis. This is a 14.1 inch display. But you could get a 15.4 inch screen as an option making this one of the very few machines where you could get two physical screen sizes, both with the same resolution, like what? In terms of I.O. and connectivity, there's also only the bare minimum. We have modem, Ethernet, VGA, some USB 2.0, with microphone, headphone and an express card slot. On the other side, we do have a DVD or W drive, so that's pretty nice. On the back we also don't have Dell's ubiquitous 7.4mm barrel jack, probably in favour of a cheaper variant. And on the back neither does it feature uh, Dell's docking station port, which was standard on practically all latitudes at the time. But we do however have this, this is a small service hatch, just so you can access the heatsink and CPU, which is socketed in this platform, so that's pretty nice actually. I picked this machine up for only 10 euros about a year ago just to play around with some Linux distros because I thought the design was interesting for the wrong reason and because it was cheap. But then I thought, what about Windows 10? In the past I played around with plenty of Pentium M machines and they run Windows 7 just fine, but Windows 10? I was curious. A little research revealed that in regards to Windows and I got pretty lucky with this machine. As what well, turned out to be most important is if the CPU supports NX bit in Intel terminology that's XD bit. And that's a security feature which Intel only started to add to their CPUs around 2004 2005. With first um, on the desktop Prescott got it, and on the mobile side it was added to the C0 revision of a Pentium M. And this machine has one of those chips, a Pentium M Dothan 740 at 1.73 gigahertz. Now while these are the earliest Intel chips to support it, they aren't the earliest chips, as AMD added an bit to their line of CPUs earlier than Intel did, with um, the Athlon 64 getting it around 2003. So while these are the earliest Intel chips, they aren't the earliest chips. As for RAM, we have 2GB of dual channel DDR2-667, although it's capped at DDR2-400 in this machine. You could run Windows 10 on less than a gigabyte even, but to give it its best shot, I've fully decked out this machine. However, it wasn't smooth sailing from there on. Initially, I started out with the 2004 build of Windows 10, but it would give an IRQL not less or equal blue screen when attempting to install. So then I went back to the 1903 build from 2019, but ran into the same issue. It wasn't until I went all the way back to the 1607 build from 2016 that it managed to install. Not quite sure what's up with the newer versions. If you do know, please leave a comment below. Everything pretty much installed smoothly, apart from the graphics driver, unfortunately. This machine has the 910 GML chipset with GMA900 graphics. And I tried basically everything, including some dubious modded drivers, but no luck. So we're stuck with the Windows Basic drivers and a 1024 by 768 resolution. Luckily the BIOS does allow for disabling screen fill to fix the aspect ratio. I was pleasantly surprised that the drivers for Wi-Fi worked, 
which wasn't always the case on Linux. So what's it like running Windows 10 on a single-core Pentium M CPU from 2005? Well, boot time is better than you'd expect. Despite the battered 5400 RPM parallel ATA drive, it got to the desktop in only 29 seconds. Likely thanks to the lighter weight 1607 build of Windows 10. To get a better idea of what using this machine is like, I sat down and actually did some work on it. Using the Edge browser and Word Online, I was able to write and edit some of the script of this video. And for that, it was quite decent. Larger web pages are a bit slow to load, but in general, you can work with multiple browser tabs, and it's reasonably snappy. Also, the keyboard, while very loud, has a nice feel to it. But if we ask more from it than that, it does start to fall apart rather quickly. 480p VP9 YouTube using Chrome is a tall order, with very choppy playback and tons of dropped frames. Going down to 360p does improve things with less dropped frames, but it's still not great. You'd really have to go down all the way to 240p to get a decently smooth playback, but at that point you might as well coat your screen in Vaseline. Other load times are less flattering as well, with Chrome taking over 40 seconds to load, and Steam about a minute and 10 seconds. Oof. And just like with the previous video on the single core Sandy Bridge, you can't have any background processes running, or it'll quickly run out of Steam regardless of what you're doing. Speaking of Steam, it installs just fine on this hardware. Browsing the store does use a considerable amount of CPU, but overall I was able to install GTA 3 without issue. And as for gaming, as we don't have any proper graphics drivers, it won't come as a surprise that you can't do any gaming on it. GTA 3, even with the lowest settings and a 640x480 resolution, GTA 3 would still only run at around 5 FPS. As for some benchmarks, my usual test suite is 64 bit and needs at least 4GB of RAM, so I wasn't able to run most of the tests. And do keep in mind that this is a 32 bit system as opposed to 64, so it might not always be a true apples to apples comparison. But starting with the Octane 2.0 browser test, the Pentium M scored 5671 points, half of that of the single core Sandy Bridge G465. And a modern Skylake i5 6200U scored 30,912. Onto the speedometer 2.0 browser test, the Pentium M managed 18.5 runs per minute, which isn't terrible considering the Sandy Bridge G465 achieved 31.5 runs, but the Skylake 6200U managed 76.2. Next up is 7-zip, and here the age of the hardware really shows. 1702 MIPS for the compression, 1558 MIPS for the decompression. The G465 scored over double for the compression and decompression, and the i5-6200U scored 6 to 8 times higher. And lastly, Cinebench R11.5, with a score of 0.4 points. Which is a low score, but if we have a look at the benchmark results from Anantex Ian Cutrus for R11.5 single thread, we see the Pentium M740 is at the same level as AMD's Jaguar core. And in Octane and in Speedometer, the Pentium M was rather close as well, now the Jaguar core was used in the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, launched in 2013, nine years after Dothan. So in that light, it's actually quite impressive. And on that positive note, that is all for this video. There are a few things we could still do in the future to improve the Windows 10 Pentium M experience, like a parallel ATA SSD or a conversion from PATA to MSATA, or look into a machine that is SATA based in the first place. But that is all for now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up, and if you want to be kept up to date on future videos, why not consider subscribing? And I'm curious, what are your experiences with the Pentium M platform? Please do leave them in the comment below. Well that was all for now, and bye bye.